Is the effectiveness of a weight loss program based on exercise different than the effectiveness of a weight loss program based on diet? The 40 overweight people put on a strict one-year exercise program lost an average of 20.08 pounds with the standard deviation of 3.32 pounds. The 37 overweight people put on a strict one-year diet lost an average of 16.43 pounds with the standard deviation of 2.92 pounds. What can be conducted? What can be concluded at the alpha level of 0.05? And we're going to assume that the first average is the number of pounds lost by people on an exercise program. So we have two samples here, uh, both based on average weight loss, one based on exercise, one based on diet. Um, the the population standard deviation was not given here at all, so this is going to be a two-sample t-test. Um, we do have standard deviations, but these come from the sample because it says that there were 37 overweight people and they lost an average of 16.43 pounds. So this is the sample mean and then the standard deviation of those 37 people is 2.92 pounds. And then the same thing goes for the people that were in the exercise program. So we have X bar one, so that's the sample mean from the first sample, and that was 20.08, that was the mean weight loss from the exercise uh, group. And then the standard deviation from the exercise group uh, that was 3.32 pounds. Okay, now let's see, X bar two, that's the sample mean from the people that dieted, that was 16.43. And the standard deviation from the diet sample was 2.92. All right, now this is a two sample t-test. So we're gonna have the null hypothesis set up as mu one is equal to mu two. And then for the alternative hypothesis, since we're looking to see if it's different, not necessarily more or less than, we're gonna say mu one does not equal to mu two. So this is gonna be our null and alternative hypothesis. Then we're gonna have to perform a two sample t-test to find the test statistic and the p-value. So I'm gonna to go to stat and over to tests and I'm gonna go down to two sample t-test and I'm gonna put in the information we're gonna do this under stacks since we don't have a list of data values. Our X bar one is 20.8. Our sample standard deviation from the first group is 3.32. And that sample size from the first sample, that was 40. X two bar, let's see that's 16. 0.43. The standard deviation for the second group, that was 2.92. And then the second group had 37 people in it, so N2 is going to be 37. Since this is a two-tailed test, we're going to use the do not equal symbol to um, show that they we're doing a two-tailed test. And then I'm going to come down and hit calculate and it's gonna give me my T test statistic. So I have, my T is 6.1433. Let me write that down. T, whoops, let me put it up here. T is equal to Exeg 
Now, for the p-value, we have a very small number. We have 3.58786 e negative 8. So I'm going to take the decimal place and move it over 8 places. When I do that and I round, I'm going to get that we just have a p-value of 0. It's super, super close to 0. And when we round it, we just get 0. Now, for the critical value, remember this is a two-tailed test. So we're going to have a critical region on both sides. Okay, so we got to find those cutoffs. Now, let's see. We have an alpha level of 0 0.05. So when I cut that area into two for each wing, that's going to give me that each of these wings is going to be 0 0.025 for that area. So that means I'm going to put in um, inverse t, because we're using the t distribution, and I'm going to put in an area of 0 0.025, and I also need to know my degrees of freedom. Uh, so let's write that down as well. My degrees of freedom is 74.8. 8188 And I'm getting that information on my calculator right here, DF for degrees of freedom. Okay, so now on the calculator, I'm going to go to um, second VARS, and I'm going to use inverse T. I'm going to tell the calculator to put in an area of 0 0.025, and my degrees of freedom is 74818730 uh let's see i forgot my decimal place i need to go back hold on I should have a point there, 0 0.8188730. Okay. Oh my goodness, I gotta clear that out. Let's try this one more time. All right, I'm gonna go down 0 0.025. I'm gonna hit paste. And I'm going to get negative 1.99 and then 2, 2. So this is negative 1.9922. Two. So that's this cutoff point right here. And then over here, we have positive 1.9922. Now, it looks like our test statistic is positive, so I should be using positive 1.922 because we're looking at the right side. So let me erase that negative. Um, and then, of course, because this is T critical, we want to make sure we choose T there. Now, the test statistic is 614 or 6.1433. So when I draw a line, here's zero in the middle, 6.1433 is way past 1.99. So that's going to be in this red area. It's past this cutoff point. So that means we are going to reject the null hypothesis. Now, for step four, when we use the p-value to compare to alpha, we get the p-value is zero, and that's certainly less than 0 0.05. So I'm going to choose less than, and we're definitely going to reject the null hypothesis when the p-value is less than a. So that means at the 0 0.05 level, there is evidence to conclude that the population mean weight loss based on exercise is different than the population mean 
weight loss based on diet.